friends, let's continue with chapter nine. Rick Hazier, Sonny asked dumbfoundedly. The word dumbfoundedly here means wondering why in the world Klaus wanted to eat alphabet soup at a time like this. And Rick Hazier here means Klaus, why in the world do you want to eat alphabet soup at a time like this? We're not going to eat it, Klaus said, handing <laughs> Sonny one of the cans. We're going to pour just about all of it down the sink. Pia tree is e cam or a via del rec eo text it's me, Sonny said, which you will probably recall means something along the lines of, I must admit, I don't have the faintest idea of what is going on. Sonny had not said this particular thing three times over the course of her life, and she was beginning to wonder if there was something she was going, if this was something she was going to say more and more as she grew older. The last time you said that, Klaus said with a smile, the three of us were trying to figure out the pages of the, quag the quagmires left behind. He held out a page for Sonny to see, and then pointed to the words Anna Graham. We thought this was someone's name, Klaus said, but it's really a kind of code. An anagram is when you move the letters around in one or more words to make another word out of, make another word or words. Still, really, I have to say it again. Pia tree sai kam o a via del rake ia temex iti, Sunny said with a sigh. I'll give you an example, Klaus said. It's the example the Quagmires found. Look on the same page they wrote Alfun Kut. That's the name of the man who wrote The Marvelous Marriage, that dreadful play Count Olaf forced us to participate in. Yuck, Sonny said, which meant, don't remind me. But look, Klaus said, Alfun Kut has all the same letters as Count Olaf. Olaf just rearranged the letters in his name to hide the fact that he really wrote this play himself, you see? Hmm. From mean, Sonny said, which meant something like, I think I understand, but it's difficult for someone as young as myself. It's difficult for me, too, Klaus said. That's why the alphabet soup will help. I'm sorry. That's why, I just assume, that's why the alphabet soup will come in handy. Same thing. Okay, Count Olaf uses anagrams when he wants to hide something, and right now he's hiding our sister. I bet she's somewhere on this list, but her name's been scrambled up. The soup is going to help unscramble her. But how, Sonny asked. It's difficult to figure out anagrams if you can't move the letters around, Klaus said. Normally, alphabet blocks or lettered tiles would be perfect, but alphabet noodles will do in a pinch. Now, hurry and open a can of soup, Sunny grinned, showing all of her sharp, sharp teeth, and then swung her head down onto the can of soup, remembering the day she had learned to open cans all by herself. It was not that long ago, although it felt like <laughs> it was in the very distant past, because it was before the Baudelaire mansion burned down, when the entire family was happy and together. It was the Baudelaire's mother's birthday, and she was sleeping late while everyone baked a cake for her. Violet was beating the eggs, butter, and sugar with a mixing device she had invented herself. Klaus was sitting on the floor. Sorry, not sitting on the floor. He was sifting the flour. Make stuff up. Sifting the flour with the cinnamon, pausing every few minutes to wipe his glasses. And the Baudelaire's father was making his famous cream cheese frosting, which would be spread thickly on top of the cake. All was going well until the electric can opener broke and Violet didn't have the proper tools to fix it. The Baudelaire's father desperately needed to open a can of condensed milk to make his frosting. And for a moment, it looked like the cake was going to be ruined. But Sunny, who had been playing quietly on the floor this whole time, said her first word, bite and bit down on the can, poking four small holes to, so the sweet, thick milk could pour out. The bottlers laughed and applauded, and the children's mother came downstairs, and from then on, they used Sunny whenever they needed to open a can of anything, except for beets. Now, as the younger bottlers bit along, as the youngest bottler bit along the edges of the can of an alphabet soup, 
She wondered if one of her parents had really survived the fire and if she dared get her hopes up just because of one sentence on page 13 of the Snicket file. Sonny wondered if the Baudelaire family would ever be together again, laughing and clapping and working together to make something sweet and delicious. All done, Sonny said finally. Good work, Sonny Klaus said. Now let's try to find alphabet noodles that spell Violet's name. V, Sonny, Sonny asked. That's right, Klaus said. V-I-O-L-E-T. B-A-U-D-E-L-A-I-R-E. The two younger bottlers reached into the can of soup and sorted through the diced carrots, chopped celery, blanched potatoes, roasted peppers, and steamed peas, which were all in a rich and creamy broth made from a, from a secret blend of herbs and spices to find the noodles they needed. The soup was cold from sitting in the closet for months and months, and occasionally they would find the right letter only to have it fall into pieces or slip from their clammy fingers back into the can. But before too long, they had found a V, and an I, and an O, and an L, an E, a T, a B, an A, a U, a D, another E, another L, another A, another I, and R. And a bit of carrot they decided to use <laughs> when a third E was not to be found. Now, Klaus said, after they laid all of the noodles on the top on top of another can, they could move them around. Let's take another look at the list of patients. Mateus announced that the operation would take place in the surgical ward. So let's look in that, that section of the list and try to see if any names look like good bets. Sonny poured the rest of the soup into the sink and nodded in agreement. And Klaus hurriedly found the surgical ward section of the list and read the names of the patients. Lisa N. Lutenday. Albert E. Devolonia, Linda Baldeen, Alda O. Erber Violet. Oh, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Ed Valentrebrew, Laura V. Bleedy Monty Kensical, Ned H. Riger, Eric Bluthetz, Ruth Duracroak. Al, let me make sure I didn't skip a page. Al Bransnow, Carrie E. Alba, Alba Udite. Goodness, Klaus said. Every single patient on this list has a name that looks like an anagram. How in the world can we sort through all these names before it's too late? V, Sonny said. You're right, Klaus said. Any name that doesn't have a V in it can't be an anagram of Violet Baudelaire. We could cross those off the list, if we had a pen, that is. Sonny reached thoughtfully into one of the white medical coats, wondering what doctors might keep in their pockets. She found a surgical mask, which is perfect for covering one's face, and a pair of rubber gloves that are perfect for protecting one's hands. And at the very bottom of the pocket, she found a ballpoint pen, which is perfect for crossing out names which aren't the anagrams we're looking for. With a grin, Sonny handed the pen to Klaus, who quickly crossed out the names without V. Now the list looked like this. Hmm. It's gonna fill you. I hope you can see it. All right. The first name is crossed off. The third name is crossed off. Um, and the last one, two, three, four, five, six names are crossed off, leaving only four names. I hope that was helpful. That makes it much easier, Klaus said. Now let's move around the letters in Violet's name and see if we can spell out Albert E. Dev, Dev Ilosia. Working carefully to avoid breaking them, Klaus began to move the noodles he and Sonny had taken out of the soup and soon learned that Albert E. Dev Ilosia and Violet Baudelaire were not quite anagrams. They were close but they did not have the exact same letters in their names. Albert E. Devlowia must be an actual sick person, Klaus said in disappointment. Let's try to spell out Ada O. Uber Violet. Once again, the supply closet was filled with the sound of sifting noodles, a faint and damp sound that made the children think of something slimy emerging from a swamp. 
It was, however, a far nicer sound than the one that interrupted their anagram decoding. Attention, attention, Mateus's voice sounded particularly snide as it called for attention from the square speaker over the bottler's heads. The surgical ward will now be closed for the craniectomy. Only Dr. Flacutano and his associates will be allowed into the ward until the patient is dead. I mean, until the operation is over. That is all. Velocity, Sunny shrieked. I know we have to hurry, Klaus cried. I'm moving these noodles as quickly as I can. Ada O. Uberville isn't it either. Mm. Too bad. He turned to the list of patients again to see what was next and accidentally hit a noodle with his elbow, knocking it to the floor with a moist splat. Sonny picked it up for him, but the fall had split it into two pieces. Instead of an O, the bottlers now had a pair of parentheses. That's okay, Klaus said hurriedly. The next, the next name on the list is Ed Valiant Brew, which doesn't have an O in it anyway. Oh, Sonny shrieked. Oh, Klaus agreed. Oh, Sonny insisted. Oh, Klaus cried. I see what you mean. If it doesn't have an O in it, it can't be an anagram for Violet Baudelaire. That only leaves one name on this list. Laura V. Bleed Ioti. That must be the one we're looking for. Check, Sunny said, and held her breath as Sunny, as Klaus, sorry, moved the noodles around. In a few seconds, the name of the ex eldest Baudelaire sister had been transformed into Laura V. Bledioti, except for the O, which Sunny still held in pieces in her tiny fist, and the last E, which was still a piece of carrot. It's her, it's her all right, Klaus said with a grin of triumph. We found Violet. Ask you, Sonny said, which meant we never would have found her if you hadn't figured out that Olaf was using anagrams. It was really the Quagmire triplets who figured it out, Klaus said, holding up the notebook page, and it was you who opened the Kansas soup, which made it much easier. But before we congratulate ourselves, let's rescue our sister. Klaus took a look at the list of patients. We'll find Laura V. Bledioti in room 922 of the surgical ward. Greedito, Sonny pointed out, which meant, but Mateus, <laughs> but Mateus closed the surgical ward. Then we'll have to open it, Klaus said, grimly, and took a good look around the supply closet. Let's put on those white medical coats, he said. Maybe if we look like doctors, we can get into the ward. We can use these surgical masks in the, in the pocket to hide our faces, just like Olaf's associates did at the lumber mill. L lumber mill. Quagmire, Sonny said doubtfully, which meant when the quagmires used disguises, they didn't fool Olaf. But when Olaf uses disguises, Klaus said, he fooled everyone. Us, Sonny said, except us, Klaus agreed. But we don't have to fool ourselves. True, Sonny said, and reached for two white coats. Because most doctors are adults, the white coats were far too big for children who were reminded of the enormous pinstripe suits Esme Squalor had purchased for them when they had been their guardians. Klaus helped Sonny roll up the sleeves of her coat and Sonny helped Klaus tie his mask around his face and in a few moments the children were finished putting on their disguises. Let's go, go Klaus said and put his hand on the door of the supply closet but he did not open it. Instead, he turned back to his sister and the two bottlers looked at each other. Even though the siblings were wearing white coats and had surgical masks on their face, they did not look like doctors. They looked like two children in white coats with surgical masks on their faces. Their disguises looked <laughs> spurious. A word which here means nothing at all like a real doctor. <laughs> and yet they were no more spurious than the disguises that Olaf had been using since his first attempt to steal the Baudelaire fortune. Klaus and Sonny looked at one another and hoped that Olaf's method would method, sorry, would work for them and help and help them steal their sister. And without another word, they opened the door and stepped out of the supply closet. Doof, Sonny said, which meant, but how are we going to find the surgical ward when the maps of the hospital are so confusing? 
We'll have to find someone who is going there, Klaus said, looking for somebody who looks, looks like they're on their way to the surgical ward. Salata, Sunny said. She meant something along the lines of, but there are so many people here. And she was right. Although the vol volunteers fighting disease were nowhere to be seen, the hallways of Himmlich Hospital were full of people. A hospital needs many different people and many different types of equipment in order to work properly. And as Klaus and Sonny tried to find the surgical ward, they saw all sorts of hospital employees and devices hurrying through the halls. There were physicians carrying stethoscopes, hurrying to listen to people's heartbeats, and there was obstetricians carrying babies, hurrying to deliver people's children. There were radiologists carrying x-ray machines, hurrying to view people's insides, and there were optic surgeons carrying laser-driven technology, hurrying to get inside people's views. <laughs> there were nurses carrying hy hypodermic needles, hurrying to give people shots, and there were administrators carrying clipboards, hurrying to catch up on important paperwork. But no matter where the bottlers looked, they couldn't see anyone who seemed to be hurrying to the surgical ward. I don't see any surgeons, Klaus said in desperation. Peter Pick, Sonny said, which meant me neither. Out of the way, everybody demanded a voice at the end of the hallway. I'm a surgeon, surgical assistant, carrying equipment for Dr. Flactano. <laughs> The other employees of the hospital stopped and, clear, and cleared the way for the person who had spoken, a tall person dressed in a white lab coat and a surgical mask who was coming down the hallway in odd, tottering steps. I've got to get to the surgical ward right away, the person called, walking past the bottle airs without even glancing at them. But Klaus and Sonny gla glanced at this person. They saw beneath the bottom of the hem of the white coat, the pair of shoes with the stiletto heels, that this person was wearing and they saw the handbag in the shape of an eye that the person was holding in one hand the children saw the black veil of a person's hat which was hanging in front of the surgical mask and they saw blotches of lipstick which had soaked through from the person's lips and were and were staining the bottom of the mask the person of course was pretending to be a surgical assistant and she was carrying something that was pretending to be a piece of surgical equipment. But the children did not need more than a glance to see through both of these spurious disguises. As they watched the person tottering down the hallway, the two bottleers knew at once that she was really Esme Squalor, the villainous girlfriend of Count Olaf. And as they looked at the thing she was carrying glinting in the light of the hospital hallway, the two bottlers knew that it was nothing more than a large, rusty knife with a long row of jagged teeth, just perfect for a craniectomy. All right, that is the end of chapter nine. I'll be back very shortly.